it's day 48 of my ultimate backpacking adventure and I am now in Brunei. I got here yesterday, I stayed in a, a place near the ferry port where I landed and then this morning I got a taxi because the bus system is so difficult and complicated. But I got up, up to the capital and that's where I am right now. And I'm at the waterfront. Why is it called the waterfront? Because there's a load of water behind me. So I have been online. I have found out of places to go to to see. And no better place to start than here. And this is the Royal Wharf. And this leads all the way down past them houses to the main mosque of the city. And this is just a nice little area, it's peaceful and quiet. You've got little seats to sit down, taking the views of the river. Little picnic spots further on down that way. And then across the river, there's loads of speedboats, is the world's oldest water village. All these houses across there are on stilts on the water and it is the biggest in the world as well. And it's got its own, I don't know if you can see the background there, its own mosque, it's got its own police station, it's got all on stilts. Um, just amazing. And it goes, you can see the bridge there, it goes all the way down through there. Crazy. So when you walk around, it's actually about 33 degrees and it's hot. So I'm going to try and do this, this tour as quickly as I can so I can find some aircon to cool down. So Brunei itself is a small country. It's about the size of Luxembourg and it's got a population of just under half a million people, roughly about 450,000. It is one of the richest countries in the world per capita, per person. Oh, I like that. That would look nice in my garden. If I had a big enough garden. And all around you can see modern with Islamic architecture in the background there. Right, let's go to the next spot. The reason Brunei is so rich is because of oil and gas. And they found it in the 1920s. And they became rich very quick. Or at least the Sultan became very rich very quick. So I'm still in the waterfront. And all these speedboats are basically taxis taking you across either over there or further on down the river. Now I did get told by a taxi driver that if I took one of these across there to the water village, which is worth going to see, the fact that I'm a white European Westerner, they would probably charge me, not the taxi driver, but the guys in the, the water village itself, between 30 and 15 Brunei dollar just to enter and have a walk around. That's expensive, that's my daily budget. That's not gonna be happening. Oh, that's nice, that. So the full name of the country, or the proper name of the country is uh, Brunei Darussalam. And I'm still at the waterfront. Yeah, as I said, there's a little gap down there. Speedboats everywhere. I want to go... We're going to walk further on down here. Still at the waterfront. Nice open area. Now, I was down here about 
an hour and a half ago just to chill out, relax, take in the sights. And it's a Friday and between 12 and 2 o'clock, this place, even though it's capital city, is like a ghost town. The whole, f you can hear in the background, the mosques. This whole place, for two hours every Friday, all the men go to the mosque and all the women just shut up shop. Nothing is open at all. So I think this is called prayers. And I th think you can see the mosque just Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. See the golden tower? Dome? The name of the capital city, and I've got to use my phone for this because it's hard to remember, Bande Seri Begawan. But every time I've seen it online, it's been abbreviated to BSB, and that's what it's going to be called from now on. Now, in front of me is a pedestrian bridge and it's designed to look like a wave. Can't really see it from here. And it's just to represent the maritime activities of BSB and Brunei. Now here you can get a better look at the mosque. Now I will get a chance to go around the side of it uh, and the front because it is pretty impressive. As I said, I've already been around a little bit during the uh, ghost town experience of everyone in the mosque. And that was because the Sultan, about 10, 20 years ago, decided that it's not fair for people who were working not to be able to attend the mosque. So he decreed that, let's just close everything down every Friday between 12 and two. Now I did say I got here yesterday and I stayed near the ferry port and came here by taxi, but I'm actually leaving tomorrow from Brunei. The main reason is, is it's expensive. It is very expensive, um, more than what I thought it'd be from the hostels, even though the one I'm staying in is only £10 a night. It's basic, very basic. Uh, taxis, food, it's gone above my budget and I just can't afford it, so I need to go. But there is another reason, and this is where I have to confess. I'm a smoker. I'm a dirty cigarette smoker. In this country here, it's illegal. Shops are not allowed to sell cigarettes anywhere. You can't buy them. As I found out yesterday when I walked into a shop to uh, ask what cigarettes they had without realizing the law, and it looked like I was asking for heroin. You are not allowed to smoke in any public spaces. So as you look around, there is no cigarette butts, there is no one smoking. It's illegal smoke on public spaces, anywhere near a government building. And if you are caught, it's a 300 Brunei dollar fine immediately. I could go call Turkey and stay here for a couple more days. No. I'm going to be leaving here to go to the Malaysian side of Borneo, to the side of where I was uh, the other day, and be able to feel not guilty smoking a cigarette in the open air, looking out for police, which is what I've been doing uh, since I got here yesterday and I found out what the law was. And it's, I, f I felt like a very naughty schoolboy doing it but it's been very rare I've been doing it because I do not want to get caught. 
because of that this is my only chance of getting out and about to see Brunei and the capital. I mean even though it's the end of the court prayer between 12 to 2, it's still very quiet. There's hardly anybody around. But yeah, well, let's have a look at this mosque. Oh, this is the way to the pedestrian bridge with this wave-like structure. There are lots of people using this uh, open space to go for running, which <laughs> it's 33 degrees. Why? Could wait until it gets a bit cooler. Even though that sun has gone in, it's still pretty warm. But look at that. Now just through the railings you can possibly see a structure, a replica of a royal barge from the sixth pardon me, from the 16th century. But I'm gonna, I think there's a better space down here. So you can see in all its glory. A good tip for coming to this country is it doesn't use Uber, it doesn't use Grab, which are the two main uh, transport apps you can use with Southeast Asia. It has its own and it's called Dart, D-A-R-T. And you can download it before you get into the country and it's, it's pretty easy to use. However, when I use the taxis, Dart service to come down here. I put in the Royal Key, which is down the place we started off at. The guy turned up and said, Do you want to go to South Africa? No. Do not want to go to South Africa, it's too far. So there is uh, technical problems with Dart that taxi drivers do realise and they'll sort you out, which he did. And then there's the mosque. With the barge. Let's get a bit closer. Oh, there's a path down there. Let's use that. Before we get down to the path, I'll just show you a quick glimpse of this. This is the Purpose Ban Main Gate 1968. How do I know that? There's a sign that tells me. And it says a heritage trail, um, so there must be something that takes you around the whole of the centre with little bits of history. So, I've read it. So it's built as a memorial in 1968 to commemorate the coronation day of His Majesty the Sultan. So he's been the Sultan, the king of this place since 1968 and now the path oh this is going to be a good instagram picture so there is the barge and there's the mosque with the golden dome wow and that water is just so calm The architecture on that mosque is stunning. Right, let's have a wander on the side. So I was standing on this chair to get a decent view. One thing I've seen a lot is grass, trees, greenery all around the city and you can tell that it's rich it's just so it is peaceful isn't it it's just so quiet around here i mean it's a friday afternoon and here is the side view 
Now I have got a shorts and t-shirt on so I'm not going to go too far in. I don't want to disrespect them. Beautiful. Across the road from the mosque is a main square. So this place, and it's just across the road from where them cars are. But this square is used as a ceremonial square for major celebrations in the, the country, the city. And I think the front of it, because I can see a gate, is on the other side. So I've got a better view from over here. And you can see it's well looked after. And then in the 1960s, this was actually used as a horse racing track. So although it's used for ceremonies now, it would have been full of horses in the 60s. As I'm walking around, I'm finding it really difficult to comprehend that it's a Friday afternoon in a capital city and it's really quiet. Even the traffic, there's, there is some, but there's not a lot when you consider places like, I don't know, London, Rome, New York. It's just quiet. It's like a ghost town. I'm now at the front of this park and it is also the historical site where the proclamation of Brunei's independence from the United Kingdom was made on the 1st of January 1984. How do I know that? Because it's written down on that thing there. Thank, thank you. But as I walk past this, you've got that archway. If you stand in the right area, you get the, the mosque right in the center with the tower. Oh, that's beautiful. In fact, you're gonna get a close up in that. Now the sun's starting to come down, which means it's starting to get late. So I've got, I think I've got a couple more things to see over this way and then uh, I need to head back, mainly because if I'm leaving tomorrow morning uh, to go to the city of Miri, I need to find a bus. And so far I've been told there are no buses available. Before COVID, uh, there used to be a bus a day, two buses a day, but since then nothing has come back. So it's going to be an exciting one. All right, across this road, and it's not really that busy, is a bank. But on the side of it, you can just see it's the old British General Post Office. Sorry. Right. So when this was a British colony, that would have been the place to be. Now, it looks like they've kept the original design, just added a little porch on the front, put um, the name of the bank on. Bit of history there. And this looks like a colonial building as well. So that's the, oh, Secretariat's building. Is that on green? Prime Minister's office. On a road that says, Shalan Elizabeth II. Oh, Queen Elizabeth II? Wow. Yep, Prime Minister's office. There's a 
Heritage Trail sign, uh, complete in 1953, uh, a unique feature of the building is seen from the aerial view, it resembles the letter E. All right. Um, I would love to hire a plane and go above and then see me around the side on the mosaics is the history of Brunei but with that sun it's hard to see even I'm squinting to look at it now we're starting to get a bit cooler now it is getting down to about 30 degrees which is not cooler and I know that when I went into the hostel uh, and it's called the 22 hour hostel which is a strange name for a hostel because I am staying for more than 22 hours but as I walked in oh my god the aircon it was it was like being in Iceland it was beautiful So next on the list, and I think this is the second last one, is the old Lapau Lama building, which is this building here, not the hut. Um, this heritage building was constructed in 1951 with a colonial architectural concept. On the 29th of September 1959, this was the venue for the pro proclamation of the Brunei written constitution of 1959, which was signed by the Sultan, what the current Sultan's dad, and a representative of the British government. And this is another old building that they've, uh, they've not chucked down. Uh, and the last one, oh, there's a, looks like a Chinese building. Could be a Chinese temple in the background there. But we're going to the last one. Only because I am feeling the heat and starting, not a panic, but uh, worry a little bit about getting out of Brunei before cold turkey hits hard. Now, at the start, I said this was the 48th day uh, of me travelling. Now, when I sat down way, way back three, four months ago in Australia to try and work this out of what I was going to be doing and giving a rough plan in my head, of where I'll be at certain points. At this point, I was hoping to be in Singapore. So I am way, way behind of where I should be. So I am going to start going longer distances, which will probably mean overnight buses because they'll be cheaper. It depends on how the roads are, because if the roads are like that, I won't sleep. Oh, and this is the last spot. This is the Royal Regalia Museum. This is where the Sultan of Brunei has donated his, his father's and his ancestor belongings into a museum. It was built to commemorate the 1992 Silver Jubilee of His Majesty uh, accession to the throne. Uh, things that are inside the museum, apart from the clothes and... Uh, but there's a historical re review uh, of the present Sultan's life uh, through family pictures. Um, 
And there's a hologram of the Sultan as you walk in. Now, because it's a holy day, I don't think it's open, being a Friday. But I'll have a walk around, because there's a sign that sees me in entrance. Traffic's starting to get busy all of a sudden. Now, I have read this is free to go in. I want to see this hologram with the, the Sultan. There's the entrance. Nope. Nope. Not let me in. Is there another door there? Oh, that's the entrance. It's confusing me already, but this is closed as well though. Monday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, Friday, closed. Drat! This is where I start thinking, shall I cancel my, my departure tomorrow? Just go cold turkey or try and find another man who will provide <laughs> cigarettes that you've never heard of from someone you've never heard of just to see a hologram of the Sultan. I mean, there's always a chance that I can come back. You know, I've still got about 30 years left to live, if that. I'm sure there'll be a chance for me to come and get a job in the oil and gas industry and earn lots of money. Looking over here because you've got um, Lots of stuff over there that I might just have a walk across, see? As I've crossed the road, I've just realised that the whole place I want to look at is actually covered in a fence that I can't get through. Now, I don't know if this is a university, but there's a sign down there. And I've just looked across the road, that place where the proclamation of Brunei was signed by the Sultan is now the Brunei History Centre. And there's a Heritage Trail sign. Uh, it's the Diwan Majlis building. Uh, completed in May 1968, it was the venue for the 9th Legislative Council of the Brunei Assembly on the 20th of December 1968. Oh wow! That whole building inside, complete with towers and everything. There's all one building. You know what, have a look inside. In you go. Have a look around. Obviously you can see more than what I can. Does it look any good? I can just see the tower. Chinese tower. Oh, and oh, you come. Without getting damaged, there you go. And how was that for you? Did you see anything? Obviously, I'm not going to see anything until I get back to the hostel and download this and go, that's what they saw. So that is my tour of the capital city, BSB, in Brunei. I'm sure there is so much to see, but I can't afford it. And I don't want to do cold turkey. So I will be leaving tomorrow. I will be going to uh, Miri, if I can find a bus. If I can't, I'll have to stay here. But there's only one way to find out, and that is press 
the subscribe button and you will see if I'm still here or if I've gone away. If you've liked this video, you've just got to press that like button. If you've got any comments, and I'm sure I will have lots going, you dirty smoker, uh, then feel free to comment away. But as I try and find a coffee shop to get Wi-Fi, to get a taxi, to get back to the hostel, it's bye-bye for now.